All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with school students in his Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020 program at 11 this morning. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says government will act as facilitator for all stakeholders in achieving the target of 5 trillion dollar economy. India successfully test fires 3500 kilometer range nuclear capable missile that can be launched from a submarine. More than 100 people killed in a missile and drone attack in Yemen. And in cricket, India beat Australia by seven wickets in third and final ODI in Bengaluru, clinched the series 2-1. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with a cross-section of students, teachers and parents at Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020 at Tal Katora Stadium in New Delhi at 11 this morning. This is the third edition of Prime Minister's Interaction Program with the school students. He will answer questions and interact with students about how they can beat examination stress. Over 2,000 students, parents and teachers will participate in the program from all over the country. In January last year, during the second edition of Pariksha Pe Charcha, the Prime Minister had asked students to treat examinations as opportunities. हम एग्जाम को कसौटी को एक अवसर माने ये अपॉर्चुनिटी है अगर हम इसको अपॉर्चुनिटी मानेंगे तो आपको इसका आनंद आए और जब चुनौती होती है तो एक ईश्वर ने हर व्यक्ति के अंदर एक एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी ताकत दी एक समय था अपॉर्चुनिटी आई आपकी ऊर्जा बाहर आई आपके अंदर बहुत कुछ पड़ा आपने ऑब्जर्व करना लेकिन उस सामर्थ्यों को परखने के लिए आपका अपना कोई मैकेनिज्म नहीं है तो ये एग्जाम वो आपको अवसर देती है आपके अपने सामर्थ्य को परखने के लिए। Our correspondent also spoke to some students who will take part in Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. I am Ria Mahindra Patil from Maharashtra, JNV Amravati from Class 10. I am very happy to meet uh, Mr. Narendra Modi sir as I conducted and listened last two Pariksha Pe Charcha sessions. He told each and every student that the exams are festivals. We not take any pressure or stress of it. We very happily conduct that exams. I am Krishika Agrawal from class 10 Takola Maharashtra. I am feeling very glad to meet the Prime Minister because it's a very great opportunity to meet him and it's really, really a great chance and I am really happy that I am here. And when first this Pariksha Pichaja session came, it was like how can a Prime Minister be related to exams? But then people participated enthusiastically. I am Shivanand Dikshit from Sant Vivekanand School at Ava UP. My question is that how we can change point of view of the public or the, how can we stop the bifurcation between students which are good or which are average? Our correspondent has filed this report. A lot of excitement and enthusiasm is being seen among the students, teachers and parents to participate in the unique event. They are also excited to receive valuable tips on how to deal with examination-related stress from the Prime Minister. Mr. Modi is keen to ensure that the students take exams in a relaxed atmosphere and do not come under stress to ensure better results in the long run. To make this program more student-centric, for the first time, students will moderate the program. This year, four Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan school students will compare the program. These students were shortlisted from the Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat Parv debate competition organized last year. With Anand Kumar, Suparna Segya, AIR News, Delhi. Prime Minister's message to students, teachers and parents. How to beat exam stress and achieve big in life? The Prime Minister answers. Want to know how to come out with flying colors? Listen to the Prime Minister. Tune in to AIR News on 20th January to listen to Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. The News Services Division of All India Radio in its weekly bilingual live phone-in program, Public Speak, will bring you a discussion tonight on Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. This can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. Listeners can ask questions to the experts sitting in our studio on toll-free telephone number 1-800-115767. You can also ask questions on telephone number 11 
and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag Ask AIR. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. This program is also available on Doordarshan DTH. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that the government will act as a facilitator for all stakeholders in achieving the target of $5 trillion economy. The minister said this while delivering the Nani Palkiwala Centenary Lecture in Chennai last evening. She said the target of India becoming a $5 trillion economy is not an abstract thinking, but a practical one. Ms. Sitaraman said the Modi government believes in transformative growth and not in incremental growth. The finance minister said the phenomenal rise in digital transactions in the country has inspired the whole world. The digitization of Indian economy and the rapidity with which people have accepted digital payments, India has today become a leader in this. And there are today, wherever the Prime Minister is having a bilateral meeting with any of the countries, there are countries which ask you. Major economies have also mentioned to the Prime Minister that we'd like to learn from your digitization experience. A complaint has been registered against protesters in Shaheen Bagh area of Delhi for blocking the road while protesting against the Citizenship Amendment Act, CAA. According to Delhi Police, the complaint states that immense inconvenience has been caused to commuters as they have to take alternate routes due to the ongoing anti-CAA protest in Shaheen Bagh area. The complainant has requested the police to lodge an FIR and remove the blockade immediately. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has accused the opposition parties of spreading rumours about the Citizenship Amendment Act. He was speaking at a rally organised by the BJP in Gorakhpur yesterday. The Chief Minister said the act is not against any Indian citizen but is against those who entered the Indian territory illegally and are involved in anti-social and anti-national activities. Mr. Adityanath said that it is the responsibility of every Indian citizen, especially the youth, to tell people the real facts about the CAA. He also urged the BJP's cadre to go door-to-door -door and inform the citizens about the facts regarding the Amendment Act. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India has successfully test-fired a 3,500-kilometer range nuclear-capable missile that can be launched from a submarine. The test of the K-4 ballistic missile was conducted off the Vizag coast in Andhra Pradesh yesterday. With this test, India has moved one more step towards the induction of this ballistic missile on the INS Arihant class of nuclear submarines. The missile was developed by Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. The three-meter-tall missile carries a nuclear warhead of over one ton. Only the U.S., Russia, and China have submarine-launched ballistic missiles of 3,500-kilometer range. The submarine-launched ballistic missile is the most important part of the air, land, and sea nuclear triad and is at the front of India's second strike capability. The Delhi High Court will hear today the Enforcement Directorate's plea to cancel the anticipatory bail granted to Robert Wadra and his close aide Manoj Arora in an alleged money laundering case. The trial court had on April 1st granted anticipatory bail to Wadra and Arora. The case relates to alleged money laundering in the purchase of a London-based property worth £1.9 million. The nominations for the election to the post of BJP National President will be filed today. The polling, if required, will take place the next day. Senior BJP leader and in charge of the party organizational election process, Radha Mohan Singh, announced the schedule for the election of the party chief. BJP working president J.P. Nadda is likely to be elected unopposed for the top party post. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu has said the promotion and protection of ancient Indian languages is very important as they offer a window to our ancient civilization values, knowledge and wisdom. He made the remarks during his visit to the Central Institute of Classical Tamil and the International Institute of Tamil Studies in Chennai yesterday. He called for a national movement for promotion of mother tongue. The Uttar Pradesh government has come up with a unique scheme for the welfare of Divyang citizen of the state. 
It provides stalls to Divyangs for opening of shops at Prime Minister Prime locations. UP Transport Minister Ashok Kataria said the government will allot stalls to Divyangs at 100 bus stops with the help of an NGO run by IIT alumni so that they can become independent and live with dignity. उत्तर प्रदेश परिवहन निगम के द्वारा एक दिव्यांग स्टॉल नाम से उत्तर प्रदेश के लगभग 100 बस स्टैंड पर दिव्यांग स्टॉल खोलने की प्रक्रिया आरंभ किए हैं और इसमें दिव्यांग जनों को आर्थिक रूप से सुदृढ़ करने के लिए हम उन्हें एक स्टॉल बनाकर देंगे More than 100 people were killed and dozens wounded in a missile and drone attack in central Yemen. The Houthis attacked a mosque in a military camp in the central province of Marib during evening prayers. An army spokesman said that the dead included soldiers and civilians and that the Houthis would face a ruthless retaliation to the strike. The Houthis did not make any immediate claim of responsibility. India beat Australia by 7 wickets in the third and final ODI cricket in Bengaluru last night and clinched the series 2-1. Opting to bat first, Australia posted a competitive total of 286 for 9 in the stipulated 50 overs. In reply, India scored 289 for 3 in 47.3 overs. Skipper Virat Kohli scored 89. He was adjudged the man of the series. Mohammad Shami claimed 4 wickets while Ravindra Jadeja scalped 2. In the third Khelo India Youth Games football and basketball finals will be played in Guwahati today. Maharashtra continued to dominate the tally with 193 medals including 60 gold followed by Haryana with 45 gold medals. A report. India's best backstroke swimmer Srihari Nataraj opened up for Karnataka to win 400 meter relay. The dramatic win saw them finish a day with 9 gold. Delhi swimmers enjoy a good day winning 3 gold to help them consolidate their position in third place with 30 gold. Delhi's Anurag Singh also won a gold. He said, "I am Anurag Singh from Delhi. I started swimming just because for fun. Then I started like professional like 4-5 years ago. I trained with my dad only. He's a coach in Delhi only Talkot Haryana managed three gold through their wrestlers. Uttar Pradesh Bharti won in freestyle event. Tamil Nadu girls under 17 weightlifters claimed two gold. These medals saw Tamil Nadu rise to the sixth place with 13 golds. With Manas Pratim, Shashank Kumar, Guwahati. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. Thank you, Anuja. Duty-free shops may become less of a draw for air travellers, writes the Hindu Business Line, imposing curbs on duty-free sale of alcohol, tobacco products. Deshanet side CDS will have broader horizon with the new Chief of Defence Staff covering border intelligence as well. Seeking report from government for not informing him on NTCAA petition, the pioneer quotes the Kerala governor, I am not mute spectator. Center for Tougher Law Against Sexual Harassment at Work states the Hindu. The Economic Times writes government may include off-budget spending for a clearer picture, which includes government liabilities also. For the first time to test voter identification, the Indian Express says, Terengana to try out facial recognition in civic polls. Super 100 crosses first milestone, writes the Tribune, adding 34 students out of 48 score above 90 percentile in the JEE main. And finally, a pioneer headline states, India takes a big leap in gamma ray study about the gamma ray telescope all set to function from 2020 year end, finding its place in the elite scientific community. And with that, it's back to you, Anuja. Thank you, Abhishek. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact with school students in his Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020 program at 11 this morning. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says government will act as facilitator for all stakeholders in achieving the target of $5 trillion economy. India successfully test fires 3,500 km range nuclear capable missile that can be launched from a submarine. More than 100 people killed in a missile and drone attack in Yemen. And in cricket, India beat Australia by seven wickets in third and final ODI in Bengaluru, clinched the series 2-1. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.